This is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are going to be looking at day two of suffering, sacrifice, and other undesirables. And we're going to look particularly at the story of David, the Ark, and Obed-Edom. And I think this, this video is actually entitled um, Six six paces right so um and you'll understand why in a second so let's look at the scriptural context and let's get started at looking at sacrifice suffering and what's happening here so we're going to look at second samuel chapter six and it says um oh so let me give you a little context before because i'm going to start in the sixth verse but before that there's a little context so just just listen to me as you as you're reading or go back in your bible if you want to read it with as you as you see it um so what's happened is the ark of the covenant is being moved from one location to another okay and as it's being moved it's put on the op it's put on a cart and the cart is carrying the ark of the covenant but that wasn't god's atten- intentional design god wanted it to be carried by the by the levites by the priestly order of the levites and um for whatever reason it was put on this cart um and wasn't a good reason and it didn't work out and so in the sixth verse what's happening here as i'm starting to read it says when they came to the threshing floor of nacon uzzah reached out and took hold of the ark of god because the oxen had stumbled okay so it was on a cart with the ox driving it and then the lord's anger burned against uzzah because of his um irreverent act okay and so therefore god struck him down and he died and beside beside the ark of god so he just struck down and fell down now if we skip verse 8 because it wasn't as relevant but you should read it and moving on to verse 9 it says David was afraid of the of the Lord that day and said how can the ark of the Lord ever come to me he was not willing to take the ark of the Lord to be with him in the city of David instead he took it to the house of Obed-Edom the Gizite and the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom the Gittite excuse me I don't know why I said Gizite Gittite for three months and the Lord blessed him and his entire house Households. Okay. Now David was told, and this is verse 12, the Lord was blessed. Uh, the Lord has blessed the household of Obed Edom and everything he has because of the ark of God. So David went to bring up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who were carrying the ark of the Lord had taken six steps or six paces, then he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. All right, so why am I using this example for suffering sacrifice and other undesirables? Well, because of what's happening here. When when we look at the context of this story, it's very interesting um, how we get to a place of sacrifice. So in the beginning of the story, we have David doing something in a way that is irreverent to God, really disobedient to God's intentions and will. He already gave them instructions on how the Ark of the Covenant was to be carried, how was to be moved whatever was going to happen with the ark of the covenant was supposed to happen in a specific way now david didn't do it that way and he irritated god and uzzah has to die because he reaches out to try to save the ark or whatever instead of just you know um letting david take the consequences i suppose if the ark or the covenant had fallen it was really on david because that david was the one that was responsible to it but uzzah with i'm sure with great and in, good intentions reaches out his hand tries to block the ark i mean stop the ark from falling and it falls and it's all jacked up and so there goes that but here goes the thing david so david was already wrong because he was doing something in a way he shouldn't have been doing it but then secondly once Uzzah dies, David is now angry with God because God was angry with Uzzah for doing this irreverent act. And so he's like, oh man, I mean, what are we going to do? You just so hard to please, basically. <laughs> okay. You just so hard to please. I'm not going to take you to the, to the, um, to the city of David because you never know. Now all these people going to be dead if we try to carry it and it's not going to work. And whatever David's mindset was, is he had an issue with the way God wanted to move the, the Ark of the Covenant to be moved. And that becomes clear because he finds himself angry with God and then in his anger towards God he decides you know what instead of bringing it to the the city of David well we're gonna put it in Obed Edom's house who lived on the outskirts he was a Gittite he lived on the outskirts and so he leaves it in Obed Edom's house and Obed Edom's house is blessed why because the presence of God is in the Ark of the Covenant symbolic of the Ark of the Covenant is the presence of God and so what's happening is God's blessing 
wherever his presence is, there's a blessing. And so what's the lesson that we learn here that David realizes is that, wait a minute, these blessings that are in Obed-Edom's home need to really be within all access to all of the people of God. It's not just Obed-Edom who needs to bless. The city of David needs to be blessed. The people need to be blessed. We need to bring the ark to its rightful place and put it back into the in the city of David where the people can be blessed. And as we do it, we know now we're going to have to make a sacrifice. So every six steps here, they're making a sacrifice for the thing, um, for the, in, in reverence to God that they're serving. And so every six paces, there's a sacrifice being made, but let's look at what's being said here. Like, okay, big deal is we and I kind of retold the story that we already read, but the reason I retold it that way is so that we can get an understanding of what, what legitimately is happening. So you see, David had his own way of doing things and he was trying to do it his way. For whatever inconvenience or convenience, he was the king. And if he wanted something to happen a certain way, it could have happened however he wanted it to happen. I want to be clear about that. But instead of doing it the way that it should have been done, moving it originally the way it should have been moved, he decides to do something different. And then when that that different behavior isn't rewarded it's not blessed so when we are disobedient and we're not blessed in our disobedience then we can sometimes become resentful towards God and that's what happens with with David he has a consequence for his actions there's a consequence for his actions which were already disobedient and in that consequence he becomes resentful towards God or angry about to God and decides well fine I'm not even gonna take it I'm just not gonna do it your way at all meaning this ark is gonna just stay here at Obed Edom's house because I can't do anything with you. And so there's this, this resentment that kind of comes in in which David is really just being disobedient, but now he's let his disobedience become an issue. And because of his issue with God or his offense against God, David suffers. The city of David suffers. How then does he does the city of David suffer? You ask. Well, because they're not receiving the blessings of the, the blessing of the presence of God. Remember, Obed Edom's house is getting those blessings, and so David's house isn't getting the blessing. I mean, David's city is not get the city of David is not getting the blessings that are deserving. And so, what is happening? There's a sacrifice because of David's disobedience, and there's a suffering. Uzzah dies because of disobedience and the city suffers because they're not being blessed by the presence of the Ark of the Covenant. And so we find out here that it changes our perspective of suffering and sacrifice, right? Here we learn that really suffering and sacrifice can almost always be tied in some way to disobedience of one kind or another. Because some people may be saying, well, I don't know if I agree with that. Well, definitely it's something to agree with because sin is what causes suffering right and so we find that sin causes suffering and disobedience tends towards sacrifice right and so what do we what does that mean well because of david's disobedience uza suffers and dies in, in in direct correlation he was following orders he reached out his hand to save the ark of the covenant from falling which was a legitimately good thing to do but at the end of the day he dies there's a consequence because god is not with that irreverent act of trying to touch the ark of the covenant he wasn't ever with that and so it didn't work but whose action who's actually responsible really is david because that was his role and his responsibility. And so I wanted to couple in a little bit tighter into this understanding that God was giving me. He was saying, listen, what sometimes when you are suffering, Erica, or when you are feeling like there's a sacrifice that's needed, Erica, it's really about where you or someone else directly disobeyed what I had intended to be done. You used another protocol, you took another route, you went in another direction. And because of that, that's sin, right? Disobedience is sin. And because of that sin, because we're out of that perfect will of God, there's always going to be negative consequences. There's always going to be suffering. There's always going to need to be a sacrifice when something is not right. And so we, you are suffering like in time, at times you're suffering like David is suffering because instead of doing it my way, you want to do it your way. And so he showed me in this place of self-protection. He said, where you set up yourself to protect yourself you didn't allow yourself to have certain types of relationships with people who might have been a blessing to you 
because you were protecting yourself. And if you keep protecting yourself, you're going to keep missing out on these relationships. And so there'll be a suffering because you won't be receiving the fullness of my blessings. But you will learn like David learned that if you keep putting this protection of yourself here, then you will not receive the blessing and the blessing will go elsewhere. Wherever my presence is, the blessing will go. Wherever obedience is, there will be a blessing. And so what does he say? Even if you were afraid, even if it seemed like an impossibility of task, I want you to do what I told you to do the way I told you to do it because I am trying to prevent your suffering. And I'm trying to prevent you from having to sacrifice something that you don't need to sacrifice. You see, they didn't need to make this sacrifice every six paces. The reason they did that was to, to, to recompense or to pay back for all of this disobedience that had come before this act. And so they were so grateful, I guess, to get another opportunity. They took six paces and started slaughtering animals. Why? Because that was how they said, oh, Lord, we're sorry. We're repentant. We are turned from this behavior and we want you to bless us like you blessed Obed-Edom. We want to receive the fullness of you. We want to receive this Ark of the Covenant, this is super important. And God has to do that with us too. He had to do it with me. He said, look at I, I know what you're trying to do. I get it. I get this self-protection mechanism because people are dastardly at best. <laughs> Sometimes they're just dastardly. Sometimes they just, just do deplorable things. He said, but look, 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 look. If you do it my way, if you love the way I want you to love, if you receive the way I want you to receive, if you bless the way I ask you to be blessed, if you're where I tell you to be, if you're doing what I tell you to do, there I've already made a way around the thing that seems impossible for you. It's already been a way made for you in this way. And if you could just trust me to take my way first, then I won't have you won't have to deal with the suffering or the sacrifice of doing things your way. And so he says, so for you, Erica, the suffering and sacrifice is really not what you've been making it to be like I'm asking you to crucify yourself no I'm asking you to just obey because when you're disobedient the suffering the sacrifice it plays a larger role than I've intended it to play in your life that's a big deal the story is an interesting story to relate it to but here goes the thing it's it was me I don't know about you it was me and it was a place where I was like, oh, I wasn't feeling the direct consequences of disobeying God or putting up my own self-protection. I really wasn't because I didn't feel like I was losing anything. But the truth of the matter is I wasn't gaining everything that God intended for me. And so when I'm not getting everything that God has for me, then I'm losing when you're not being blessed like God wants you to be blessed, then you are sacrificing. You are suffering and you don't even understand it because you don't know all the things that God intends for you. He knows better for you than you know for yourself. And so sometimes you think that you're okay where you are because that's the position that you want to be in. But I'm telling you, you never want to be in a position in which you're missing out on something that God has for you. You just don't. And I just didn't. And because I didn't, I don't anymore. I had to change my positioning. I hope that you could change yours as well. If this, you identify with this idea that, you know, because I've set up this, I've missed out on that, then you're ro rolling in the right devotional series. I hope you continue to watch with us. I'm praying for you. I hope you're praying for me. Uh, praise God with me that I've been able to turn around this place of self-protection and be willing to let the Lord do whatever he wants to do within the context of, of whatever business, personal, whatever kind of relationships he wants to set up. Because at the end of the day, I don't want to be a person who's so, uh, who's so much um, protecting their self that they don't get the blessing that's about that's waiting for them on this other side because the scripture says that man will give unto your bosom it's going to happen through people it says that when when god is giving us a return even on the tithes and offering that man is going to give it us to that that's how it's going to come it's going to come through a person so we have to be able to say well instead of us judging what people we want around us let god choose and let god's direction and his choosing give us the wisdom that we need so that we're not suffering or sacrificing something that we don't really want to suffer nor do we want to sacrifice can you trust that though can you trust people to give you truth even if you've erected your own idea of truth 
Oh, that was a word for somebody. I'm praying for you, okay? I'm praying that you are healing, living, growing, and I'm praying that you're praying for me. I, I really hope you're praying. I, I feel your prayers at times, but I want to make sure I feel it all the time. And, and I'm going to encourage you, but also invite you back again tomorrow for another devotional series as we continue with suffering and sacrifices and other 